Hey everybody, Scal Crafty here again, and no, this is no joke. <laughs> it's it's cold down here, you know, and uh, sometimes until I warm up, until the lights get going, I got a light, lot of lights down here that warm up the shop eventually. But uh, we're down here. We got to do a little bit of laundry and um, and uh, our Friday's project. So uh, what we're going to talk about today, we got a couple interesting things, a couple good projects. But uh, I know you guys been asking for a shop tour. So little by little, I'm gonna try and introduce you to some of the shop. And let me show you this part here. This is above the uh, washing machine here. But this is what a little, you could see here, it's just a uh, a little like a work bench area because the washing machine is a perfect height for doing any kind of work. And uh, a lot of times I don't have to turn on, from here down is the shop. And I don't have to turn on all those lights and everything so I could leave everything dark back here. And uh, sometimes I have a little project to do, and then I just come, that's, this is just about everything you would need to do almost anything. You can see I'm doing laundry now. But um, I have everything, basically you can eat sockets, I have uh, screwdrivers, I have uh, different ones obviously, um, but that's all you need, just a basic setup. So that's where you, a lot of times you'll see me doing my projects over here. Now over here under some of my machinist toolboxes and things like that, I have a toolbox here. And if you lift this up here, this I made a little catch that you could hold it, that it holds up here. And in here, this is what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to talk about files. I had a lot of people asking me about different files. These are my good files, my sharp files, and these are mostly American-made good files and and whatnot. Let me show you what we're going to now talk about. I had about a couple today. people ask me about files and things like that. I dug this out. This is actually the first file set that I bought uh, must be 20, over 20, could it be 30? Maybe 30, over 30 years ago I bought this. And um, this was, now look, when you have no files, I had nothing, you know, other than my grandfather's old files, and half of them were dull, which a lot of old files are, and people don't even know they're dull until you work with a sharp file. And once you work with a sharp file, uh, it's a night and day difference. So I bought this set because I had none of my own. And this set here was made in China. It was a cheap set. I don't even know how much I paid for it. But um, the files were, uh, they were, you know, surprisingly decent. And there's different types. This is a double cut. Now you can see here, if you look real close, when you see one line going that way, that's a single cut. And when you see another line coming that way, that's called a double cut. Uh, we can go into files for a whole bunch of, but until you own a, a bunch of different files, you don't know what's good and what isn't good because, you know, first of all, you don't know what shapes you like. You know, you can go out and buy this. This is called a four-way because it has four different filing surfaces on it. And um, this is very sharp, although the steeler is, the steels are not the quality of American files or Swiss files for that. But um, let's say you, you get this type of file and you say, wow, I really like the shape of this. I do a lot of soft woodworking. This is great. But if you don't do any of that, you'll never use it. So there's no sense in going out and spending $25 on a one file when you can have a whole set for that. So uh, this is a very good set. It was a great set, served me really well. Now, fast forward to uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, this file set came, I saw this on eBay and I said, you know what, I want to see if the quality was any different. Again, another made in China Chinese set. And um, this one here, it's a 12 pieces, five file set, as you can see. <laughs> comes in a nice vinyl tool roll and it smells like a new shower curtain I always like that smell of a new shower curtain anyway um okay this I went through we're gonna go run a couple of these through their paces but I just want to show you you have a nice round file here you have a a, a triangular file here um, over here is a coarser triangular file, double cut, regular straight file, four-way file, a rasp. Uh, you have a handy file. They call this a handy file because it's got a, kind of a hand to it. Uh, here you have a coarse, uh, a rasp type file. Here's a half round file. You see half of it's round. And you have a round rasp. Uh, 12 pieces. It's really 10 files and two handles. Um, this set was $17 shipped to the house. So what's so great about this now, again, I'm not uh, pushing Chinese tools by any means, but 
if you don't have a file in your house and you don't know what kind of file you like or need, this is a great set to start off with, especially for somebody that's young or somebody that's just getting into it, wh whoever it is, because, you know, these are all sharp. And the best thing is once you get to use these files, you can say, wow, you know what? I like this type of file. I'm not crazy about this. I like a single cut. I like this. And you know, and then you go out and you buy a Nicholson or something like that, a good file. So let's give okay, these a Here test. we have a piece of one inch cold rolled steel. And uh, I probably cut it off at one time or it was cut off with a hacksaw or something. It's a little uneven, but this is a perfect uh, thing to try out the files with. I drilled a one inch hole in a piece of uh, two by three. Then I sawed it in half. This makes a great holder for the vise because it's a little difficult to hold round stock in the vise. Put that in here and then we'll put it in here. Great grandpa's vise. We'll set it down and we'll use this as our testing the file. You can see it gives a real nice hold on that uh, piece of steel. So let's go pick out a file. Okay, to try and remove a lot of stock quickly, we're gonna use a double cut file. We have one here, a big one, and one here, a smaller one. We'll go with the big one here, and uh, we'll give that a try and see how that works out. Okay, you can see here by the teeth on the file, uh, we use just this side. And it's still very sharp and I just want to show you what the surface looks like now we took off and we cleaned up that surface that's with the rough double cut file now let me show you what the mill file does now this is the uh, single cut you can see there's only cuts going one way on this file and um, it's a smoother file this will give you a nicer finish again remember what the finish looks like on this file and then we'll come back and I'll show you after the mill file okay here is the file you can see there's no damage to the file and you can see the beautiful finish that this left on here nice and smooth now let's have some fun and try one of them triangular files okay so we did a little bit of a V groove in here now you might be wondering you could see the groove we put in here uh, with the file and it's just a, a great little set. I mean, for $16, and you say, well, what are you gonna use something like that for? Let's say, you know, you want to make a tool, uh, put this back in the block, and right now, with that little V block there, you have a tool that you could straighten out, let's say a bent nail. Here's a, uh, a nail that's bent. You put the bend in there like this, and you could straighten it out. You can, that little V groove, Will help you straighten that nail out and get it straighter. You know, a lot easier than you could. You know, just uh, just wailing on it. But um, different tools that you could do. But I I really think that if you don't have a file set or if you don't even own a file to begin with, this little set uh, will pay for itself. Trust me. And uh, again, it's a great. You can try them out. You don't have to worry about messing them up. You know, because you eventually you might mess up a file. But you you know, if it's a good file, you just threw twenty bucks in the trash. But here. You know, you can have fun and try them out and try different things. And even if you have something you don't want to use your good files on, it's a, it's worth the money. Okay, let's get today's okay, project. Today's project should be a lot of fun because I've been looking for one of these since we did our last World War II wire cutters, British wire cutters. You remember those? If not, this is what the, uh, the video looked like. The video I did a few months ago was called the World War II British Folding Wire Cutters. Now, ever since then, I've been looking for one of these because uh, this was the folding version of the uh, the same type of cutter, but they only, it's just amazing how this works. Now, to operate these cutters, all you do is you pull them apart, flip them around, and that's it. No fiddling, no fuss. Genius, genius idea. Now, these were first, first designed in World War I, and they were so popular, they carried over to World War II. Now, remember, World War I and World War II were only 22 years apart, so, uh, you know, that's not a lot of time, but they, I'm sure they still had some in stock, but these things were just fabulous, they, and I can't wait to try them out. They feel so solid and so good, but, you know, as you can see, I can't even tell a date mark or anything. It's got a lot of residual uh, paint. There's a marking on there. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to clean them up, see what it looks like underneath, and see what we're going to do for the finish. Okay, we are calling this project done. And uh, not to disappoint anybody, but uh, for those of you new to the channel, uh, let me tell you how it works when we do old tools here. Uh, if the tool is old, 
and it's very common and there it has no value such as this this they made millions of there's still millions of these around here and they're you know valueless more or less we can we have carte blanche we can do whatever we want with that tool however when we uh, come across a tool like this that might have some historical significance uh such as this tool here uh world war one or world war two uh you know something that we kind of that's where we step back and we just all we do we took off all the uh, loose paint scale rust and cleaned everything up and um all the casting everything left everything uh the way it was except there was a little sharp edge here we took down with the file uh, other than that um everything is exactly the way it came and uh coated everything with a light coat of oil everything is all lubricated it just works beautifully um smooth as can be we'll try it out in a minute let me tell you what some of the markings mean uh this here uh first time i did this i didn't know what it was but now i do thanks to my friends on the uk side that is the uh the british uh, it's called a broad arrow and that is stamped on every piece of government issued or government gear anything the government owns that's on there now that dates back that marking it's actually supposed to be a uh an arrow at, with the two steel heads and the shaft in the middle and that dates back, back to the mid 1500s so that's how the history behind that amazing uh wt on this side i believe is a maker's mark uh a manufacturer of this so i don't know who that is i tried looking it up maybe william tomlinson um, i don't know for sure i'm trying to get information on that but i'm sure uh the guys on the other side of the pond will have more information than me so um like i said everything here there's a little lanyard hole here there was a piece of about uh 16 inches of uh manila type twine that went through here on a lot of them I guess that would help you pull it out of your pocket if it was in there you would have the twine you could pull it out of the pouch that it would come in um it's very well made the castings are a little bit rough and crude but that's that's just because they were stamping these out like crazy during the war and they were made to go through barbed wire world war one they improved the design in world war ii as you can see by my other video i don't know how much of an improvement it was we're going to try this out right now because what we have over here is we have some World War I specification barbed wire. I got a guy from, uh, a friend of mine from Utah, I was able to pick up some. So we're gonna cut off a piece of this and see how, I'll show you how tough this wire is. Here's a piece of, uh, I'm gonna use my channel lock and these are number 358s and so nippers. I'm gonna try and cut through this just so we can pull a piece out of there. So I'm gonna grab a piece here, put the cutters in and <clears throat> yeah it's these this is not easy wire to cut okay you know in 1867 a guy by the name of lucen b smith invents uh, barbed wire i know his name because i cursed him out many a time anytime i've been handling this stuff it is it will cut you it will leave a nasty puncture in you uh seven years later joseph Giddon uh he redesigns it and he gets another patent for it but 1867 this stuff goes back to and uh the germans during world war one they really uh this is a high tensile you could see here how hard it is to bend and this stuff was uh the stuff they used like in world war one and it was made so that it was very hard to penetrate and also cut so let's get to it and that's why they had to come out with these special cutters so let's see how well this cuts the uh the barbed wire so we'll put it up here and you can see it's easy to feed and okay it cut through but not as easy as the other cutter from world war ii but it does cut through there is some considerable force used but uh it does work and i could see how the imp of the second version that we had does cut a little bit easier but it does cut and you could see how the way that this the nose is shaped that when you come here it will force it to the back of the cutters and allow you to okay cut once again Extend it out, pulls in. Okay, so in closing, just to let you know how we're gonna uh, store this, uh, I won't be using this or displaying it anytime soon. So what I do is I'll wipe it down with my 50-50 coat of uh, mineral, uh, uh, mineral oil and Vaseline. 
and then I'll wrap it in wax paper and then put it in a Ziploc bag and that's how it'll stay until the next time I take it out. So hope you all enjoyed this uh, classic World War One, World War Two British folding wire cutters. Thanks so much for stopping by. Take care. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.